Are you looking to take your Raspberry Pi to the next level? Do you want to beef up your Raspberry Pi setup? Are you interested in the Argon 1 M.2 case? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then you are going to want to stay tuned for the rest of this show. All right, guys, welcome to the show. Today we are talking about the Argon One M.2. It is an expensive case coming in at roughly $50, but it is worth every penny. Let me first tell you guys that I have no affiliations. I want to let you guys know that I have no affiliations with Argon One or any other company for that matter. So the things that you hear on this channel, they are things that we are telling you because we believe them. This is an absolutely incredible case. If you are a fan of the Raspberry Pi, if you enjoy using Raspberry Pis, and you want to take your Raspberry Pi to the next level, you want to make your Raspberry Pi faster and capable of doing even more things, then this is a perfect case. I have to tell you guys, honestly, I am so, so happy with this case and what I can now do with my Raspberry Pi um, as a result of using this case. There are so many features built into this. There's so many things at work and at play. You have multiple things going on. It has a fan inside of it, so you are getting that type of cooling. But because most of the case itself is metal, it is made of aluminum, and it is actually somehow inside the CPU of the Raspberry Pi is touching the case the outside of the case is acting as a passive cooling mechanism. So if I were to touch the case right now, it actually feels warm to the touch. And that's because there is heat that is actually dissipating out through that metal case from the Raspberry Pi itself. In addition to the fan, which is running, you can set the speed of the fan. Um, it comes with some software that you that you download when you purchase the case, and it allows you to set all that up in a configuration file. One of the main things, though, that I want to let the viewers know, that I want to get out there to anybody that is interested in this case, this is, in my opinion, by far the most important important thing that you need to know if you are thinking about purchasing this case. So I'm going to jump ahead and I'm going to get right to the most important thing in case you don't care to watch the rest of this video. Are you able to plug an ethernet cable directly into this Raspberry Pi and then into your internet source? That's very important that you know the answer to that question because if you're going to go out there and buy this case and you don't have a way to directly connect to the internet via ethernet and your only way of connecting to the internet is through wi-fi then you may have some challenges ahead of you because this case is different than any of the other raspberry pi cases that you may have seen out there the wi-fi signal on the raspberry pi is hampered it is blocked by the metal case i went to get on the internet and i was not able to connect and that is because the wi-fi signal was not able to make it through the metal of the case i was having issues with it some people may be able to get it to work but most are going to have issues with that so you need to understand that this case is meant more for that person who is able to directly connect to the internet via ethernet that is where you are going to really be able to benefit 
from this case. You need that direct connection. You don't want to be using Wi-Fi. But if that is your only option, then you would have to have an additional Wi-Fi adapter. Now, because I do so many different things with Raspberry Pis, I do actually have an extra Wi-Fi adapter that is laying around. And that is my Alpha Wi-Fi adapter. I was able to hook this up to the Raspberry Pi with the Argon case. And by using that Wi-Fi adapter, which as you can see, is sticking out the back of the case. So it is on the outside of the case. I was able to get access to my Wi-Fi network and I had no issues. And this is very important for you to understand because you are not even going to be able to update your Raspberry Pi. You're not going to be able to install the software for the Argon case. You're not going to be able to get any of that done unless you can access the internet. It's pretty important. I'm, I'm quite sure that most people that would be using this case would be accessing the internet. So that is the most important thing that you guys have to understand now moving on from that for anybody else that is still interested in this case um, as you can see in the video here there are a few steps to put it together i don't want to go into great detail about that as i said you, you'll understand that when you purchase the case but you have to put this together it's not difficult to do so now, the other main feature of this case is that it allows you to use an SSD. So I have on mine, I have a 250 gigabyte SSD made by Samsung. I paid $40 for it. So what this has allowed me to do is I am no longer using an SD card inside of my Raspberry Pi. I am no longer booting up my Raspberry Pi from the SD card. The first time I had to use the SD card and then once I got everything set up, I was able to remove the SD card and now if I boot up the case and the and the Pi, I am doing so from the SSD. It's a 250 gigabyte SSD and it is technically referred to as an internal SSD because as you can see it is inside of the case so it's not an external SSD it is considered an internal SSD this is one of the other main features of this case that makes it absolutely incredible the speed it is so much faster it is so much more powerful you are going from having an SD card inside of the Raspberry Pi that may have 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes to now you are using an SSD that has anywhere from 250 gigabytes to a terabyte. In my case, I have 250 gigabytes. I am using such a small amount of that currently and I am doing a lot on this device. I mean, I am doing a lot. So in my situation, I do not have a desktop environment. I am using it more for servers. I have a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte version inside of this. So it's the fastest Raspberry Pi. That right there, coupled with the SSD, it is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. You want to take your Raspberry Pi to the next level and you want to make this thing a beast. You want to make this thing very powerful. This is the way to do it. You talk about being able to use it for a replacement for your desktop or replacement for anything. This is how you do it. This is the way to go. I installed the Raspbian OS and then I installed Open Media Vault. On top of Open Media Vault, I installed Docker. It is it is truly truly incredible. So if you are thinking about getting this case, yes, I encourage you to do so. 
Um, I do have an Ethernet line. I, I am not using the adapter. You can do so, but in my case, yes, I have a direct Ethernet connection. Now, since I have other Raspberry Pis that are also running in, in my lab over here, I have a switch that actually is a Tenda 4 port uh, PoE switch. It is a power over Ethernet switch, and that is because I have a cluster that I am running and I am powering those Raspberry Pis by way of Ethernet. So I'm able to reduce the amount of cables that I that I have. Now that switch, though it is a power over Ethernet switch, I can also use that switch to power the Argon case. The Argon case is not a power over Ethernet device. You do not power it with the Ethernet cable. My other Raspberry Pis, I am able to do so because I have a special hat on top of them that allows me to do that. So I don't want to confuse anybody here. But basically what I'm saying is, is my switch that you see here, it is a power over Ethernet switch that I am using mainly for power over Ethernet to my Raspberry Pi cluster. But in addition to that, I was able to basically tap into it, one of the ports and use it solely to provide the Ethernet connection to this Argon slash Raspberry Pi. So it is still plugged in um, like any other case would be. I also have a additional 64 gigabyte USB drive that you can see sticking out the back that I am using just for an additional uh, media source that is separate that I'm able to remove if I want to do so to store uh, videos and pictures and things that I'm doing with with other projects if there's some interest I'll go further into this I want to show you guys some of the applications that I actually have running but the video is just getting so long so thank you guys for watching this show today thank you for hanging in till the end it was a long one but this was an important topic. We had to get this out on the table. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, fresh raspberry pie.